Did you know that when Walt Disney was buying all of the land that would be used for Walt Disney World, he had to do it all in secret? You see, in the 1960s, coming straight off the success of the 1964 World's Fair in New York, Walt Disney had decided to move forward with his plans of an East Coast Disneyland that would also be the home of a futuristic city called Epcot. However, he also knew that because Disney was such a popular name that if he did so publicly, the cost of the land would be so high that he wouldn't be able to buy as much as he wanted. And you see, he wanted a lot of land because he learned a valuable lesson from Disneyland, which is that the popularity of the theme park would bring in all sorts of developers around that land and they would build up to a standard that didn't really meet Disney's level of quality. He didn't like all of the neon signs and the shady motels outside of Disneyland, so he wanted to buy enough land in Florida that there'd be enough buffer space so that even when developers flocked to Central Florida to build and like ride the coattails of success of Disney World, it wouldn't actually interrupt or mess with his vision of the theme parks. So he enlisted Robert Foster. Robert Foster was Disneyland's general counsel who specialized in real estate. Foster himself needed help, so he turned to Disney's New York law firm, Donovan, Leisure, Newton, and Irvine for help. He needed somebody who could help out who could also keep a secret, and this law firm was perfect for that. Because you see, William J. Donovan of Donovan, Leisure, Newton, and Irvine uh, actually helped form and oversee the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services, which was an espionage agency during World War II. So he knew a little bit about doing things secretly. He recruited the help of Colonel Paul Hiawell, who was his OSS chief in China before he became a CIA agent and then later opened up his own law firm in Miami. And so with this network in place, they started purchasing land. And they really did so as if it was this espionage operation. For instance, none of the contacts in Florida were actually allowed to call California directly. They had to call the law firm in New York, which would then reroute the calls to California. That way, anybody looking at the call logs wouldn't be able to piece together that whoever's buying up all this land in Florida is doing so for somebody in California. They even went as far as to using aliases. Robert Foster started to go by Robert Price when he was down in Florida, and he went as far as to creating fake business cards with that name on it that pointed to Highwell's law firm in Miami. And so they started buying up land. The main tract that they picked up was actually 12,500 acres, which was 2,500 acres more than the initial estimate that they wanted for Disney World, which would be a 10,000 acre plot of land. And this ended up being the first time they almost got caught. You see the landowners, Jack and Bill Dimitri, who had paid less than $100 an acre for the land, was asking for $165 an acre. Disney didn't really like this price, so they didn't really respond, and the owners started to get a little worried, so they dropped the price to $145 an acre. But again, Disney didn't say anything, and so they started the panic, and they panicked so much that they actually went to the offices in Miami, and they demanded to see Bob Price, and the secretary, who had never heard of this person because it was an alias, said as much, and things got a little confusing. Luckily, Highwell came out, and he sort of explained everything to him. He didn't actually admit who the company was that was buying it, but he admitted that he was working for a large company that was trying to pick up the land. Since apparently 12,000 acres wasn't enough for Walt, they ended up buying a second and third tract of land. The second was 8,500 acres, and the third largest tract was 1,800 acres. Now, believe it or not, buying 21.7 thousand acres of land was actually not the hardest part of all of this. Once they had these three large tracts of land, what they had to start doing was buying up all the little tracts of land in between it that connected them. So now that Disney was acquiring all of this land over time, they needed to try and keep it a secret. So what they did was they started forming all of these dummy corporations and they ended up forming six in total. And the idea was to split the titles among them. So it was a little less obvious that there was just this one corporation trying to buy out the middle of Florida. These dummy corporations included the I-4 Corp, which was a pun off of Interstate 4. There was Bay Lake Properties and Tomahawk Properties. There was Compass East and the Latin American Development and Management Corporation. And then there was the Reedy Creek Ranch Lands, which was owned by an MT lot, which of course, said a little faster, is empty lot. And so as you can see, none of those names really screamed Disney, so it was harder for people to tell that Disney was the buyer. However, it didn't take long for people to realize that it still was one company that was buying up all this land, and they wanted to know who. Ford, Hughes Aircraft, and even Disney were among the suspected companies. But ultimately, the news came out unwittingly by Walt himself. You see, in 1965, he had a roundtable lunch with a bunch of reporters during the celebration of the 10-year anniversary of Disneyland. 
Among those reporters was Emily Bavar of the Orlando Sentinel, and she had brought up and asked Walt if maybe Disney was the company buying up all this land in Central Florida. Now here's where Walt was a little too smart for his own good. He replied by shrugging it off and asking why Disney would want to locate in that area of Florida, and he started to list off all these reasons as to why it wouldn't make any sense for him to. Now Emily thought that this was very curious, because one, he wasn't answering the question directly, but two, he seemed very knowledgeable about real estate in Central Florida for somebody who supposedly wasn't going or planning to locate out there. So later that night, she wrote an article called Disney Hedges the Big Question and sent it back to the paper. And throughout the rest of that week, her and the Orlando Sentinel started to piece together these pieces of a puzzle. And October 24th, they ran an article with the headline, We Say Mystery Industry is Disney. The cat was out of the bag. But luckily, by that point, Disney had procured all but about 300 acres of the land they wanted. And so on November 15th, during a press conference with Roy and Florida Governor Hayden Burns, Walt announced formally his plans to create a Disney park on the East Coast along with this futuristic city of Epcot. And so after nearly two years, this undercover secret plan to buy all this land came to an end. And they were instantly proven right in doing so because the second Disney was announced, the remaining plots of land that they needed to buy shot up in price. The average price for an acre of land of the remaining plots jumped from about $183 an acre to nearly $1,000 an acre. But even with those inflated prices, Disney had purchased 27,000 acres of land for only $5 million, which was definitely a steal. And it's why today Disney World has so much room to play with, with all of their theme park and other entertainment ideas. So it's just a quick look at how Disney had to really be secret about the land they were picking up when they were planning these theme parks. If you want to learn how this strategy was used again later in Disney's history for a failed theme park attempt called Disney's America, you can check out my Did You Know Disney episode on that park. I want to thank you all for watching. Whatever you're doing this week, make the most of it because it makes it that much better. And I hope to see you all next time for the next Did You Know Disney. Bye, everybody.